What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? See this picture? I want to tell you how it ties in to this tragedy. I want to tell you about the tremendous story behind this photo. Though it won prestigious awards, I want to let you know what happened to the man behind it. Stay tuned, you'll want to hear this. Thank you, Brennan, for the introduction. Thank you for joining me again. Thank you for subscribing and liking and the comments, the helpful comments. Um, that photo was taken, taken in 1993 uh, uh, in Sudan. There was, uh, the apartheid was going on and there was tremendous famine across the land, which by the way is happening again right now. Not the apartheid, but the famine is, uh, is affecting one in four people. Millions of people are starving out in Sudan. It's not a new thing, uh, but it doesn't mean we need to ignore it. We need to address it and us Christians need to do something about it. So God bless the missions work there. If you get an opportunity in church to support uh, any poverty in third world countries, uh, like my wife and I, we support somebody and uh, and it's been a real blessing in our lives for the last couple of years. I would encourage you also to do this as we uh, review this story. Um, his name was um, Kevin Carter and he took this picture in 1993. He took a lot of pictures actually um, and, and were, they were award winning. Um, some of them, they were, uh, he, he would take pictures of tremendous sorrow and tragedy, but this picture did him in. Like Judas, when he dipped his hand the last time in the, in the bull Christ was holding, something about this incident and this picture was the, was the end of Kevin Carter. Um, and I want to tell you that story here. I want to give you a little bit of background of this guy. He, uh, he was at very humble beginnings. He grew up in middle class, but he always seemed to be uh, finding himself in the midst of, of uh, major events like the, the, the time of the uh, civil rights movement in the, in the 60s. He had saw when he was a child, he had saw some massive at atrocities against the black people. And, and then he, uh, he got into um, college. He went to college. He didn't love college. Um, and he decided to, uh, to join the army and in the Air Force. Uh, he was there for four years and things seemed to be going well until, um, until he defended a kitchen um, a mess hall worker. Uh, and then he got into a fight. They beat him up severely. He ended up uh, having enough of that and he left without telling anybody. So I guess some would say he's a deserter, but he had good reason to leave. And um, he found himself in another uh, event that he, in the midst of, he realized that he could take pictures and he dedicated himself through this event that he wanted to be a photographer. And he got a job with the uh, National Geographics and he was part of a team by 1992, 93. He was part of a team called the Bang Bang Club. And there were world renowned journalists who were taking pictures of the atrocities in Sudan. I'm not saying he set anything up. There's no record that he set any of these photos up. Uh, he, but he was, he claims that he was told and which they often are not to mess around with the natural occurrences of things. Um, and that's the instructions of the world. That's not the instructions we get from heaven. You know, we get instructions from heaven that will put us in prison. Um, and he would have lost his job, but uh, you know, for the sake of money, he, he kept going and, uh, and remembering the work. Um, some are glad that he took the photo because it, it put things into perspective at the time and caused uh, an uproar and an outreach. So uh, you judge for yourself when you read the stories behind it. You know, there was a, a woman, I read an article, it was a really interesting article by Jennifer uh, Dukes, uh, Jennifer Dukes Lee, I believe her name was. 
And uh, it was really neat. It was about this situation. And uh, her, her idea was, you know, when she looks at that picture, she's angry, she said, but at the same time, thankful and, and um, c under conviction. She thinks to herself, you know, which poor child haven't I picked up? Which poor child has vultures around it that I haven't uh, invested enough time to shoo away the vultures? And we have the power through Christ Jesus to shoo away those vultures in people's lives. We have the power if we believe that we can actually make an impact through prayer and petition and uh, uh, the acts of mercies. After all, um, charity is the bond of perfectness. So be charitable. Uh, shoo away those vultures. Don't let the fate of this child be the fate of people in your life. In the Old Testament, they would call it uh, blood guilt. Um, and we don't want blood guilt on our hands. You know, um, this child, there is some, some, a lot of controversy around this. And I'll tell you what my perspective is after hearing it. And you tell me what you think, um, if you want, in the comments. Um, you know, this... Uh, this child that was in this picture, now he claims that he shooed away the bird. But birds uh, that, that are waiting for its prey, they don't shoo away that easily. And so um, the story behind it was that this was a little girl. They, I think by his own admission, uh, he says that it was a little girl who was on her way to the food center. Her parents had, uh, were fighting over food coming off the plane and totally forgot about her. She was making her way to the uh, food center where she collapsed and the vulture came in. Now, um, Mr. Carter found a hiding place and he had to be absolutely still for over 20 minutes just for the vulture to get close enough for him to take the perfect picture. And while well, this child was was dying and uh, or certainly going to be dead soon um, if the vulture has its way. Um, he waited and uh, to, to get the perfect picture and he got it. And then he claims after they really approached him on it, what happened to this child? There was really a whole bunch of controversy around it. There's another story that it wasn't a girl. It was actually a little boy. And they gave the name to the little boy, and the boy lived till 2007 and died of a fever. Uh, but I don't, I don't, from what I read, it doesn't look like it was a little boy. It looks like it was a little girl. And what I think happened, what I personally think happened by what I read, is that child had succumbed to the fate of that vulture. Um, and Carter knew it. And I think it haunted him. I, I, you know, he had, he had witnessed tremendous atrocities through that time, took pictures of people being hung and, uh, and uh, witnessed uh, m more things than I want to say in, uh, you know, under the, the heading of PG. But um, I think he knew that the fate of this, what the fate of this child was, and that's what's haunted him. Because it was that picture that in, in 1994, shortly after he was uh, uh, appreciated by the Poetzer Society, he won the Poetzer Surprise for this, or the, sorry, <laughs> the Poetzer Prize, uh, Poetzer Prize uh, for this, um, I guess it was a surprise. Anyway, he won the Poetzer Prize for this, and um, uh, you would think he was celebratory, but but stories claim that he went sat under a tree and cried and smoked his cigarette. And then he went back to a, a f favorite childhood place where he put the exhaust in his window and killed himself. He could not live any longer. Like, uh, I, I think of the story, I don't know if it has any bearing to the, to the, to the same. But, you know, I remember an old evangelist saying, you know, if you're a thief... Or if you're, uh, you know, you've partaken in wickedness and you continue in it, um, one day you'll dip your hand for the last time in the gracious cup of the Lord, and and I hope that speaks to you who are living uh, two sides of the fence, that you would get right with the Lord, um, 
because you certainly don't want to dip your hand one last time. And I think he did buy that photo. And in the end, that photo did him in. And he couldn't live with himself, nor the consequences of what he had done and the things that he couldn't even confess to. But God knows. Uh, he, he took his life in, uh, in his favorite childhood place. And uh, I feel both remorse and sorrow and sadness because it didn't have to end that way. He, I'm sure, through his life had as many opportunities as any one of us to receive Christ. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is, you know, this world celebrates things that are not celebrated in heaven. They celebrate the tragedies that I think of Van Gogh, and I want to tell you some stories about him further on down the road, and the sorrows behind these artists and uh, their lives are debased, debauched, and yet we celebrate them in this world. But the things that God celebrates are of no interest to this world sometimes. Uh, it's a very sad story. And I don't mean to bring you down. I hope to encourage you and to encourage you that, you know, uh, not to celebrate the things the world celebrates. I want to encourage you also to, uh, to be watching for that, those poor people that have vultures over them. You have the ability to shoo them away through Christ Jesus and by the power invested in you. Thank you, folks. Stay tuned. We'll talk.